is going to be essentially an updated version of my tutorial for making a Technic mod pack because a few things have changed, especially uh, the Technic platform. So I'm just going to basically redo it, but newer and try and clarify a few points that some people had issues with. So the first thing you want to do, at least this is my method. You can do it differently, but I found this has worked for me, and I've made a lot of mod mod packs. So, uh, first thing, make a folder named mod pack. It can be anywhere. I'm mean, change this to whatever your mod pack name is. Um, then once you get inside, make two folders: one client, one server. Because you have to make these separately, although many things are essentially the same between them. So once you have these folders, go into your client, make another folder named bin and that's very important we'll come back to this server uh, this you will make you will use later this will be to launch the server I'm not there yet I just put it in there just to save some time and I'll explain that when we get to it so the next thing you're gonna want to do is most importantly is download Minecraft Forge now this step is only gonna change depending on what version you want to make a mod pack for uh, for this video, I'm going to be doing 1.9.4 because that's the latest as of this video. So I would click uh, here, go 1.9.4, and then you're going to want to get the installer, depending on your operating system, uh, installer Windows is what this one is. So we'll download that. Wait for this advertisement. All right, here we go. Wait for that to download. Now, what we do with this, and this video should be largely the same for any version of Minecraft, at least any past version. This could change in the future, but as far as I know, this is the, pretty much the same steps, at least down to 1.7. Uh, 1.6, I believe, has item IDs, which are a whole other mess, So, but nobody should be doing that. All right, so we're going to run this. And we're going to change this to let's go to this PC. I have this full disk D mod pack. And we're going to go server. And we're just going to hit open. And we want to install the server here. See, it's got the right directory. OK. It's going to download some libraries. Everything you will need is pretty automated. While that's doing that, you'll see stuff starting to fill up in here. I'll start explaining this launch script. This is for uh, Windows, obviously. If you're going to use Linux, you got to change it to a bash file. Um, all right, so we're going to edit this just so I can explain. Java basically tells it to use Java. This is your XMX is your maximum memory. XMS is your minimum. So this is two gigs, five gigs. So Minimum, it will allocate two gigs to the server. This tells it to use the server uh, Java compiler in case it wasn't. This makes sure it uses 64-bit, but you're going to want to make sure you download Java 64-bit if you plan on doing any serious mod packs because most require a, a good bit of RAM. Um, next is this, which tells it to use the G1GC garbage collector. Uh, it's a new garbage collector in, well, it's not super new, but it is the newest. And I've actually had really good results in, com in combination with this, which is a new feature for the G1GC exclusively. And it definitely reduces my memory usage. So if you are constrained on RAM, say you only have 4 gigs or something like that, this can definitely help with your server, in my opinion. But if uh, you have issues, remove it. These are all optional beyond pretty much these. And I'll get to the end and you'll see. Uh, these four are just optimizations. I believe these three are actually enabled by default. Not sure. Left them in just for redundancy. Can't hurt. This one is not. And it does some experimental optimizations. Could make it run faster. Could make it worse. Up to you. The final part we want to do is we want to do dash jar and then you want to put your name of your your forge jar 
So I tell it to look for a forge jar, and it has to be case sensitive. I'll explain this just a little more in a minute. Uh, no GUI tells it not to launch the default Minecraft uh, graphical user interface for the server. It just kind of wastes resources. You can take that off if you want it, but uh, I personally don't use it. And this one's also optional. Pause. It just tells it like if you crash or if you stop the server, instead of just closing the command prompt immediately after, it will leave it up until you hit like a button. So that's kind of handy. So I will link this one in the uh, uh, description. But if you want to know how to make your own, um, well, let me just copy this and I'll show you. So close this. So this is all downloaded now. So let's say uh, I want to make my own. Name it something else. So name it launch2. Now you'll notice it's a text document, not a Windows batch file. That's not what we want. So we're going to edit it. Put in this. What we're going to do is save as. Now what you want to change right here is you don't want to leave that text document. Look at all files. You want to name this .bat. And hit save. And that should create a bat file in the same directory and you can delete the old one. Now, we can delete this launch too because I'm not going to use that same thing. Now, currently, as you remember, this is looking for a jar named forge.jar. So what we got to do is rename this to forge and the dot jar is hidden but it's already there this don't touch because the forge dot jar is going to look for this so now we're just going to launch you should see something like this pop up it should just take a minute all right now it's going to crash and you're going to think oh man it's messed up if you read right here you just need to agree to the eula which we do right here Let's see, edit, set this false to true, save, and I relaunch it again just to make sure. It's going to prepare the start region, it's totally normal. These errors are because the files don't exist yet, so it's going to make them. Don't pay them any attention. All right, and we're done. So now we'll just type stop. It's going to save and close. Now you'll notice we all have all these new files, and these are generated just from the server launching. So here you can change things like, um, you know, your max players, your game mode, difficulty, PvP on or off, uh, network compression. You probably won't want to touch that. Um, max build height world level type you're going to change that like if you have biomes of plenty and you want to generate biomes of plenty of worlds you have to change this to biomes op all caps just a quick tip i guess but you should be aware of that if you're going to use a world generator other than vanilla um motd that's just what it says when people click on your minecraft server like the little words underneath it um see there's one other thing that's important here view distance is very big for perform performance if you find you're lacking performance you can lower this uh, back when I was a real noob I used to raise this to like 20 that was retarded um, yeah just don't do that 10 I would run it at like 8 20 is oh, the more the higher you raise it the more and more chunks each person loads essentially around them. I didn't realize that. I thought it was like view distance in the client. Like I said, I was a moron. So, yeah. Eight, probably a good number. Probably no client will notice. I run my servers at seven just to reduce lag even further because I have a lot of mods. Anyways, moving on. So now we have a mods folder. World we can delete. Doesn't really matter because it's not our final world. But obviously if that was your final world, don't delete it. Logs just has some details if you need those. Config. It has we have no mods, so it's only the forge configs, libraries, where your libraries go. Now, 
what we want to do is we want to copy. Actually, I'm almost positive you can use this, but just to be safe, let's go back. So now you want to get the, we want to do the client. So we're going to download the universal, and I believe I'm almost positive that is the universal, but I've not actually tried it. Now that I think about it, it's been a while, so we're just going to do the universal to be sure. And this is the part that kind of gives people some trouble sometimes, so. So this is where the bin folder comes into play. Go to our client, we go into bin, we'll drag this in, and all we want to do here is just name this mod pack. And that's it. Lowercase, exactly like that. And what this does is, when we're making a mod pack for Technic, we can't actually redistribute the minecraft.jar. So what this does is in the Technic launcher, it downloads that separately and it downloads your pack and it essentially merges this into the minecraft.jar on its own, which installs Forge. And that is very important. So now we've got our client key things in the client set up, our servers up, we have no mods, which means we've got to get ourselves a mod. So the easiest way to do this is curse forge. Then you just go to projects, mods, and then uh, sort for your game version 1.9.4. And bear in mind, you can't use 1.9.3, 2, 1, or just 1.9, etc. on 1.9.4. It's very specific. So if it says 1.9, it may not work. It has to be 1.9.4. So let's get a uh, let's get a good mod. Ah, oh, Ender IO. So we get Ender IO, and this is a good example because it has dependencies, which you have to be careful of. And they've made it pretty easy on Curse. Uh, I'll show you. So you want to get a files, and you have to be careful here because look at this. The number one file that it was just uploaded two hours ago is actually for 1.7. So we got to find the 1.9.4 version right here. This is the latest version. Download this. Awesome. Keep. Now, you see a required library down here. It requires Ender Core. So we're going to click that. To files. Right here, 1.9.4 is our latest version. Grab that. Download. Keep. Perfect. Now, this part's actually surprisingly easy. We go into our mods. And we just drag Ender IO. Ender Core. Let's hit launch. See if it loads. Assuming everything's good we should load up like normal and we should maybe see something from Ender IO in here if you're looking closely yep right there it goes by fast so looks like server loaded no crashes stop that now you're gonna notice under config we now have two new folders and they might not always be folders they could be down here just in a text document, but for this particular mod, it makes its own folders. So we'll go to Ender.io, and there's all sorts of stuff to configure, but we don't really have to, unless we wanted to. For this tutorial, we're not going to. So, now that's good. Now the question is, how do we get that in the client? It's actually surprisingly easier than you would think. Literally, copy this mods folder. Now, there is a caveat to this. Uh, if you have, so this is kind of how I do it in the beginning. What I do, uh, I'll just explain this a little bit, my methodology, is I do all universal mods to start with. So, I, and I always build from the server first, just because it's easier to just launch that and test than having to install it in your Minecraft folder and do launch the whole client every time. You can get your crashes fixed just with the server much quicker than with the client. And 99% of the time, if the client, if the server works with the exact same mods and same configs, the client's gonna work. So that's just my way of doing it, but you may do it the opposite, but this is my tutorial. So next we're gonna do, um, well, so I was explaining. What I do is I do all the mods that work on both client and server. Cause some mods, let me see if I can find an example. And this is a question people ask me a lot in the comments, is how do you know it's a client mod? Normally it will say, 
And actually, they've improved it. I noticed I accidentally put a client mod in my server, and it just it said in the logs, uh, this is a client-only mod, ignoring it. So you don't have to install it. But mods, usually they're visual mods. Um, Journey map is actually, surprisingly, goes on your server and the client, although I think you can do client-only if you wanted to. Uh, Wayla is also actually server and client. But this one right here, Wayla Harvest Ability, is actually a client side only so if you install this on the server it won't do anything so don't so that's what i'm saying is when i do my mods in the very initial phase i only do mods that go on both and then i will just test it all out get it working copy say i was done see all the mods i did go to clients paste my mods i already did it so now i got mods folder here no config want to match the configs here although the server does send its own configs over to the client for most but if people are playing single player you want them to match your configs that you how you have it set up to play as so now this has the uh, bin which is our forge config has our configs from our server well, assuming we've set these up how we like and it has our mods now say we want to add in a mod that uh, let's do a client side mod maybe um I uh, will just put in Wayla. And this is client and server, but we'll just do client. Well, I'll put it in both. Down this. Does this require anything? No requirements. Perfect. And we'll download this into our mods. Now keep in mind, once you've created your client and your server mods, separately and they start to diverge as you add certain client only mods you don't want to in the end like say you're doing a pack update so you start updating your mods here you don't want to just copy this folder and delete the other one in, in your clients folder because then you'll lose all your clients mods so you want to once you've got these both set up i would only use the copy paste for the initial like big mod dump like if you've got a hundred mods say in your server that are universal across the client and the server copy them in and start adding client only mods and from there on update them individually so like you know say ic2 updates or whatever copy it into the server one make sure it works come here then delete the old one in the server of course then come into here add ic2 or whatever yeah i don't know i'm just trying to explain this as best i can all right did i add it here yep so now say this is our whole mod, mod pack just these three mods what we have to do is upload this to Technic, and that's really what this tutorial is about. You should have at least, I'm assuming, some knowledge of making mod packs or you know figuring out the issues. This isn't supposed to be a you know complete tutorial on running a Minecraft server or anything like that. So now we got these. I have WinRAR installed, but you can use any archiving program. You want to add these to an archive, and we're going to make this test pack. And we're going to do dot .zip. Uh, I'll do best compression just because it makes the file a little bit smaller. Now, normally what we would do is if you have a Dropbox, this is the easiest way to do it. You just drag it in. It's very small because we have almost no mods. Wait for that to upload. Test pack should be right there. There it is. Now what you're going to do here is you just want to find it, click share. Now, for whatever reason, when I was using this link, it wasn't working, so I used the shortened link, and that worked every time. And you just copy it to your clipboard, and that's going to be your download link. But we'll come back to that. So now I'm going to go here. This is my profile. I'm going to hit up here, create a mod pack. Call this Exiles Test. And this is important. Obviously, set this to whatever version you're using. 1.9.4 for us. If you want it hidden, you can do that. Short description. Uh, it's my test pack. All right, I agree. Probably want to read those. Create. 
So now we have basically our shell. We want to hit edit. So now here's where you can kind of configure all sorts of things. So mod pack location, we would want to put our Dropbox. Now I'm almost positive my Dropbox is not going to work because I made the mistake of uploading my last pack on there a few days ago, pack update, and it exceeded the 100 gigabytes a day download, basically, limit they have on, and my Dropbox got suspended. So I don't think the public link's going to work, but I'll try it just for the ease of use. If it doesn't, I have a backup. So we're going to try that. Um, these, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just have to read these. Mod pack tags essentially helps people find your pack. You can do, like, PvP, and then if you do a comma, it locks it in. You can only do six. Maybe uh, Ender I.O., because we have Ender I.O., things like that. Mod pack website. If you have your own website or anything, put it in there, and it'll be easier for people to find it. Now, server pack, you want to check this if you have, basically, a dedicated server um, for your pack. So, say you include a server, like you host a server for your mod pack, put that on there, and that will let people sort by packs that have servers specifically designed for them. It pretty much says that, but just clarifying. Server package, if you decide you want to give away your server files for other people, you can link that here. Uh, this just changes the colors to make it easier. Say your background's uh, white, you can switch this to black. I, th I think that's what it means. I've never done it. If you use a Discord, you can link that here, and then people in the Technic Launcher can see it. It's kind of handy. So let's try this. I don't think it's going to work, but... Yeah, I didn't think so. All right, it's because my Dropbox is overloaded. So for you, that would have worked. For me, we're going to have to do this a little more complicated. Oops. Uh, i got to find this PC. D. And obviously, you wouldn't be doing this. Modpack, client. Where did I put that? Oh, there it is. Alright, I'm going to upload this to my um, VPS, which lets me have unlimited hosting. It actually isn't mine, it's a friend of mine's. Let me use it. So you can see my Infinix mod pack. There we go. Infinix mod pack's significantly bigger, 135 megs. That's the one that blew up my Dropbox in like one day. So, we're actually, I don't, I have to get the link for this zip. And I, you're not going to be doing this, so this is my Infinix mod pack, my test pack. Come back over here, put that in, and I'm just going to change this to test pack. I believe that's what it's called. Let's try updating this again. It should work this time. Yep. So that link works. Much simpler for you guys. Now, what you want to do is if you ever have an update, you want to come in here, and you want to... This is a key thing, because if you update, say you uh, upload a new pack update, and you name it Test Pack 2, put that in, you go down here and you update Mod Pack, the link is updated, but nobody running the Technic Launcher will ever get a notification to update, so there will never be an update button, essentially, unless people... The thing is, new people installing the pack will download your updated pack, or if someone deletes it and re-adds it, it will download from the updated link, but it will not actually technically be updated so what you want to do here, say well, this is version, say this is an update I'm doing, we do 1.1, if it was already 1.0, say, uh, actually we'll do 1.0 initial release. Up to version, you know, put a little thing down here, people will see this in the launcher, it's version 1. Then say later on, a couple days later, I update it, I update my link first, I hit update, then I come here, I do 1.1 or whatever version you want, you can do whatever you want, put my change log, and then I have to hit update version here, and that will push it through Technic and tell people that there is an actually an update. So that's key. So now, the next part is actually using the pack. So we're going to go launch our Technic launcher. Um... And here's an example of how you can see the Discord. That's how it looks. You can click that and it'll link you right to it. We're going to search uh, Exiles. What did I name this? Oh, there it is. Exiles Test Pack. And we're just going to click Install. What? Uh, 
I name it wrong? Let me double check my files. Test pack dot zip. Oops. Pack settings and it's possible. That should be working. So here's the problem is it when I uploaded that Dropbox it may have put in the wrong um, it may have cached the wrong the Dropbox link which can't be downloaded so might take a minute for Technic to get this right link because that should work I believe let me copy and paste this actually into a browser and see if it downloads yeah it does so that should work alright let's try it again you gotta be kidding me of course, during a tutorial. <sighs> Try again. Technic's been having issues lately. Takes forever for the updates to push. Oops, wrong. Mod pack. Close that one out, actually. Just keeping this update button until something happens. Let me actually check this, make sure the zip isn't corrupt somehow. So it finishes. Nope, well, so everything's alright, so something on Technic's side right now. Dropbox much simpler. Works first try for me. In fact, I may have to delete this pack, re add it. Oh, that was an old message. Alright, let's try this again. There we go. So that's just a Technic bug. Alright, so it's downloaded. Now this is another key thing. You click um, Launcher Options, Java Settings, and first make sure you have a 64-bit Java unless you plan on using only 2 gigs of memory. Second, I have 12 gigs installed on my PC, and my pack, my actual mod pack, that's my test pack for my mod pack, but um, it requires about, I think you can probably run it on 3 gigs, but I run 5, 5 or 6, probably anything beyond 5 is excessive, I'm not sure why I had it at 6, that's probably testing something. Um, so, for like this mod pack, 1 gig is, I'm sure, plenty. But, you know, you get add more and more mods. If it doesn't load, more than likely why. And it could be laggy because the garbage collector in Java will have to run very frequently to keep your memory usage in these limits. So if you have it at 2 and it keeps hitting 2, it has to basically pause the game for a split second and clean up some memory. And that's where you get kind of lag spikes and overall choppiness. So... I mean, depends on how much. I would never get within, I would always leave about 2 gigabytes spare. So, it actually lets you put up to 1 gigabyte less than what you have as a little safety built in. But, I would never go above 10, for instance, or even 9, probably, on a 12 gigabyte RAM system. So, if you have 8, I would probably stick around 5 max. You always just want to have some extra for your operating system and any other programs running in the background. Because... If you run out, it starts swapping your anything it was going to save in RAM to your disk, which is significantly slower. And even if you have a quick solid state hard drive, it's still very, very slow compared to RAM. So that's set up. We've got our five gigs. Everything's good. Now we hit play. It's going to download some uh, Minecraft libraries. And this is kind of cool in 1.8.9 and in 1.9.4. I'm not sure how long it's been going on, but they did add that loading screen. We're in. Six mods loaded. We can check that here. Pretty cool. Uh, we can go to single player. Let's do creative. And we'll also boot up our server and connect to that. Watch that. Now this is obviously not an optimal setup because I'm running the game and the server on the 
the same uh, PC, but for now it's fine. My PC is plenty powerful enough. All right, so as you can see, we're in. It's a little laggy while it's loading up, and the server's loading, which requires a lot of CPU power. All right. Let's see. Why am I getting? Oh, second. Let's fix that right up. Want unlimited? Oh, everything's pretty max maxed out. All right. My oh, V sync's on. I've never even actually noticed difference. There we go. That's better. 230. All right. So everything's working. No crashes. We go here. Creative menu. See, Ender IO is in. Oops. Anyways, place these blocks. And you will notice on the top, Wayla is working, giving us all this information. That's um, what am I looking at mod? Stupid cow. Now, we're going to check. Multiple. And one thing to keep in mind is uh, single player will use, uh, will run a little slower because all the work is being run on your client, whereas server, a lot of that work's done on the server and you're just connecting to it. So it's, you'll probably get more FPS on a server as long as you're not running it locally. So we're going to add this server. If it's running on your own PC, just do localhost. There it is. Shows right up. Join in. And you'll see, oops. You'll see down here, on the server, in the console, it shows, if you join the game, some information. And we are in. Now, I can't run any commands, probably. Um, yeah, because I don't have permission. So what we're going to do is we're going to do OP. Done. Although, I'm not sure if it's case sensitive. Let me try. Yep, so it's not case sensitive. So now I've got creative, I'm on my server. I've got Ender IO installed. Life is good. So, yeah, I mean, that pretty much wraps it up. It's not super complicated, but there are some key things that I've found are kind of hard to understand when you're reading it on a, you know, document or something online on a website than watching it. I probably rambled on a bit at some points because uh, I'm just kind of doing this off the cuff, but uh, hopefully it helps someone. So yeah, that's it. Um, good luck and uh, I hope you make a cool mod pack.